All right, algebros, roll your sleeves up. It's going to be a street battle in this example because in this one, we are finding the complex zeros of a polynomial function. And we also have a fourth degree polynomial to boot. So our polynomial function is 3x to the fourth minus 19x cubed minus 27x squared. Got to take a couple more breaths here, so many terms, plus 359x minus 116. Now, we are allowing for complex zeros, meaning that there could be zeros here that have eyes with them. Some weird Doctor Who stuff, I know. Uh, but anyway, the fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, which really allows us to put the fun in math or fun in functions, tells us that if we uh, include those zeros that have eyes with them, then the polynomial function is going to have exactly um, the degree uh, of zeros. Uh, what I mean by that is the number of zeros for, say, this polynomial function uh, in question is going to be exactly equal to 4. Um, so the fundamental theorem of algebra, just to recap, says that whatever the degree of your polynomial function is, that's how many zeros you're going to have. Now, they could be real, they could be non-real, a mixture of those, they could be duplicated, but all in all, they're going to be that many zeros. So basically for us, what that means in practical terms is that we are going to have four zeros. Now, we definitely have to uh, work our way through the example to see like which kind of zeros we have, um, but that will remain to be seen. Uh, so hang with me here. Let's go ahead and just quickly remind ourselves what finding the zeros really means we're trying to solve this equation f of x equals zero which means we're trying to figure out all the values of x we could plug in here to give us an output of zero um, so I'm going to bring the polynomial in now 3x to the fourth so on and so forth okay this polynomial has five terms involved with it, so any of those by hand factoring techniques are kind of going to fly out the window here. So we do have to jump to the rational zeros theorem. So let's go ahead and make use of the leading coefficient and the constant term. Here's the constant term, negative uh, 116. We're going to make a list for p using that number. And right down here, all the numbers that divide negative 116, including pluses or minuses, um, going to be these guys. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 29, or 2 for 50, Mr. Evans, uh, plus or minus 58, and plus or minus 116. All right, so those are going to be the numerators of our potential uh, rational zeros. The denominators are going to come from the numbers that divide the leading coefficient. That's going to be our list for Q. And numbers that divide 3, luckily a smaller number for us, and prime, so plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Now let's go ahead and build our list of the potential rational zeros here, or in other words, the list for P over Q. And we're going to use these as numerators and these as denominators. Plus or minus 1 over 1, plus or minus 1 over 3, move on to 2, so plus or minus 2 over 1 plus or minus 2 over 3, and just continue in this fashion until you used up all the numbers in your list for P. So definitely a SpongeBob, then I was late there. But anyway, here we go. So plus or minus 4 over 1, plus or minus 4 nerds, I'm sorry, 4 thirds, plus or minus 29 over 1, plus or minus 29 over 3, and the rest. All right, that should be them. Um, if I've left any off, I don't think I have, but if I did, my apologies for that. Let me just double check here. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so we have a lot of fractions in this list. Okay, the most amount that could uh, be zeros for us is four. So to narrow this down, what you wanna do is graph your polynomial function in the graphing calculator. Uh, which I have a little screen clipping of that here. Um, I just typed in this polynomial into Y1 and hit zoom 6, and this is what it gave me. Uh, it doesn't look like a polynomial functions graph, um, 
but you know if we were to zoom out and adjust our window settings and all that good stuff we'd see some hills and valleys um, but it appears as though this graph is crossing in only two spots on the x-axis um, so that's a clue that there are going to be two real zeros and to make up the four uh, total amount of zeros uh, two of them sh or should be non-real um, so you just want to note here so with our degree of the polynomial function there's going to be four zeros based on what we're seeing in our little screen clipping here two appear to be real which means that two should be non-real all right now let's go ahead and use our little screen clip clipping here to narrow down you know just exactly uh, which one of these numbers we should start um, focusing on to help us factor this left hand side uh, of the equation uh, the one's kind of popping out to me is this one here that looks like it's at uh, negative four and negative four is a number in our list for p over q so it's a good candidate and what I'd like to do with negative four is run it through the synthetic division uh, process so again um, negative four is going to go in this little half box my little setup here that I've been using for years now um, and to the right of this half box going to go to coefficients of the original polynomial so 3 negative 19 negative 27 359 and negative 116 all right so here we go all right give yourself a little bit of a gap long equal bar and underneath the constant term and the equal bar second half box and, and that's where our remainder is going to go and hopefully uh, we get a remainder of zero okay so let's go ahead and start the synthetic division process let's go ahead and drop the three down underneath and I'm not going to use my little swoops here um, just to kind of save on space uh, but you would do negative four times three giving us negative twelve that goes up here adding these down you get negative 31 coming back multiplying by negative 4 to this negative 31 you get 124 adding down we get 97 negative 4 times 97 is negative 388 adding those guys down you get negative 29 or 2 for 50 um, and then last but not least negative 4 times negative 29 is positive 116 so thank goodness that worked out and again I'm so happy that it worked out let me draw a little emoji alright so this verifies that negative 4 is a real 0 so it's one of the answers um, and it's going to help us start factoring the left hand side of our equation that's right here um, before I start that factoring though the coefficients that are underneath here would give way to a degree three polynomial function so you know um, once you make the factor out of the negative four the second factor is going to be 3x cubed minus 31x squared plus 97x minus 29 in which case you know you want to break that down even further um, so instead of writing out like that factored form that that we could get from the synthetic division right now um, I'd actually like to take a look at the other spot on the x-axis where the graph is crossing and that one right there is somewhere between 0 and 1 a little closer to 0 than it is to 1 um, so what you want to do is maybe look for another number in your list for p over q that would satisfy that criterion it's got to be positive it's got to be between 0 and 1 but a little bit closer to 0 uh, than it is to 1 and the number that's kind of popping out to me is this positive one-third so I'm going to just make a one-third little question mark because I'm not really sure until we run it through the synthetic division process but um, let's go ahead and see what doing one-third in, uh, in synthetic division does for us right underneath here let's do one-third that little half box and instead of using the original coefficients of the uh, polynomial function what you're going to do now is use what you got from your first round of synthetic division um, so here's what I mean so we got one-third in that little half box now I'm going to write out these numbers from our synthetic division directly to the right of it so 3 negative 31 97 and negative 29 equal bar 
remainder box, and let's get to it. So drag the three down, one third times three, that works out nicely for us, that gives us positive one. Adding down, negative 31 plus one is negative 30. Multiplying one third times negative 30 gives us negative 10. It's all working out nicely. 97 minus 10 is of course 87. And then one third times 87 winds up giving us positive 29. So awesome because these two are gonna cancel out, give us another remainder of zero. And there's our emoji. So we have two real zeros now that we've verified, negative four and one third. And if you look at our little note here, um, that's all the real zeros we're gonna find uh, because based on our graph, looks like there's two real and then there's gonna be two non-real. So here's where we wanna start to maybe factor uh, the left-hand side of the uh, equation f of x equals zero. The first factor is gonna be built by using the negative four. Again, to build a factor using a zero, it's always x minus the number, so x minus negative four, which simplifies to x plus four. And our second zero, real zero, is one third. So the factor you can build with that can be x minus one third. The other factor is gonna be built by using these numbers, the second round of synthetic division. And if you think about it, the factor that we'll be using or, or making using these numbers um, is actually going to be a degree two uh, polynomial because once we factored out x um, minus negative four, x plus four, that turns it to a degree three, but then factoring out another uh, factor from the degree three leaves you with a degree two polynomial. Uh, basically, what we're going to have now is three x squared minus 30 x plus 87, all right, and that's all still equal to zero. Now one thing that I'm noticing with this quadratic factor here is that each of these coefficients is divisible by three, meaning that you can factor a three out from all three of these. Um, and where should that factor of three go? Well, I'm gonna actually take it to the very front here. So it's three, quantity x plus four, quantity x minus one third, I'm sorry, one third. And then uh, we're gonna be left with x squared minus 10x plus 29. All right, so as I had mentioned, uh, what you wanna do here, uh, once you have your factors uh, down to where one of your factors is now a quadratic expression, uh, is set each factor equal to zero and start solving for x. All right. So let's go ahead and start setting everything equal to zero to start solving for x. And technically you could say, you know, or set three equal to zero, but you know, that obviously doesn't work. So I'll just write it, three does not equal zero. Um, so x plus four equals zero. Solving that real quickly, we get another verification of negative four being a real zero. Um, x minus one third equals zero. Solving that real quickly, verification that one third is a, uh, real zero. Um, now let's go ahead and set the quadratic factor equal to zero. And um, we already know that this should produce uh, two non-real zeros for us. And another way that you would pick up on that is if you tried to factor this by hand. Uh, we don't have factors of positive 29 that add up to negative 10, so you would be forced to use the quadratic formula either way. Um, so with that said, x equals negative b or negative negative 10 plus or minus the square root. Um, negative 10 squared or negative b, I'm sorry, b squared uh, minus 4 times a times c. So that's going to be minus 4 times 1 times 29. And that's going to be all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. All right, so let's go ahead and scrub away at the arithmetic here. That's 10 plus or minus the square root. This is gonna be 100 minus 116, giving us negative 16 in here, all over two. And 
because we got negative 16 inside the square root, that's when we're going to start to see some i's. Um, so with that said, 10 plus or minus, and what I do anytime I see a negative inside a square root, I get so angry that I want to pull an i out. Not literally, but figuratively speaking. Um, so uh, what I mean by that is I'm going to take the negative out, it turns into an i, and this winds up being the square root of 16 i. And of course all that is still over 2. All right. So let's go ahead and chip away at this some more. 10 plus or minus 4i all over 2, since square root of 16 is 4, and we still have the i here. And then uh, I guess I'll go ahead and divide the 2 into the 10 and into the 4 to get 5 plus or minus 2i. All right. Uh, notice that there are two values of x. x is 5 plus 2i, and also x is 5 minus 2i. So there are two zeros here, and they happen to be non-real, as our uh, graph had uh, kind of indicated to us. Um, so collectively, we have 1, 2, and then uh, the two zeros here. So we have four zeros, which the fundamental theorem of algebra says that um, there are no more zeros defined here, since four zeros is equal to the degree of the polynomial. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and flesh these zeros out. Let's see, negative 4, that's a real 0. We got 1 third, that's a real 0. And then we have these two non-real zeros, 5 plus 2i, and then 5 minus 2i. So those are the zeros of the polynomial function. Now let's go ahead and write out the factored form version of the polynomial using these zeros. f of x equals... All right, x minus the negative 4, so that's x plus 4. Then x minus the 1 third. And then for these, let's write x. And basically what you're going to do is change the sign. So x minus 5 minus 2i. That's by virtue of a distribution of a negative. And then same thing here. Let's go ahead and write x, and then just change the signs here to get minus 5 and then plus 2i. All right, and I kind of mentioned this in my last video. If you were to foil all these factors out, the leading coefficient would not match the leading coefficient of the original polynomial function, which going way back up here, the original leading coefficient here is 3. Uh, so the quick fix is to just go ahead and place a 3 in front of all these factors, and that would give way to a factored form version of the polynomial function. Notice that there are... Um, four factors we built here because there were four zeros. Um, another factored form version of this polynomial function utilizes a little trick. Let's go ahead and not write the 3 this time, but we'll have x plus 4. That's still a factor. x minus 1 third is still a factor. Um, actually, you know what? That's where the trick should be. My apologies for that. Let me just kind of scrub that away. All right, redo. So um, x plus 4, and then what we want to do with, uh, instead of having it as x minus 1 third, let's just multiply both those terms by 3 to get 3x minus 1. And then we'll just leave the last two factors alone. So we have x minus 5 minus 2i, and then x minus 5 plus 2i. And there we go, that's an alternative factored form version of the polynomial function. And that's where the pain and torture, I'm sorry, the fun and excitement uh, for this video ends. That's how you find complex zeros of a polynomial function. A lot of neat math being infused here. Of course, fundamental theorem of algebra is very present throughout all this. Um, using strategies, looking at the graph, trying to figure out how many real zeros you have, how many non-real. And of course, uh, working our way through that street battle. Uh, of finding those zeros um, specifically. So I hope you found this video helpful. As always, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.